Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center. And I must say I'm very impressed by the uh, turnout we had this morning. Uh, we usually have these uh, events in the evening. We thought we'd try something different this year, and um, I'm so glad to see that we have uh, standing room only here in the morning, and it just shows what strong northerners that we can get up, even though it's dark, but the time's going to change soon. So. It's my pleasure to uh, co-host the President's reception with our interim president and CEO, uh, Dr. Bill McCready. And we heard from many of our guests. They want to know where their donations are impacting patient care in Thunder Bay. And we also want to share a special thank you to all our donors for the impact that they're doing. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to get right to the point. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn the mic over to Dr. McCready to talk about where the Health Sciences Center is going for the next five years. Dr. McCready. Thanks, Ben, and welcome everybody to your hospital. This is your hospital, not my hospital or our staff's hospital, but your hospital. And uh, our, we've launched our strategic plan in 2000, for, for 2020. It's hard to believe that we've been in this institution 10 years. <coughs> and everybody knows that anything that you've got that has a microchip in it doesn't last longer than 10 years. So the gifts that you've given are vital to, for us to keep our equipment fresh. And uh, we're going to show you some of that today. Uh, our strategic plan is connected to our community. As I said, this is your hospital. Uh, to make sure that we got that right, we did a wide community consultation. We had uh, 17 community focus groups and 1,300 people who gave us input into our strategic plan in the process. Uh, it was based on a comprehensive environmental scan. Those of you who don't know what that parlance is, is we had a look at the environment that we, that we uh, live in and work in, looked at our patients, looked at our communities, tried to have our plan uh, based on that. So we, we reviewed our vision, which has remained the same, and that's healthy together. So we all chant that first thing in the morning when we come into work. We all stand in the morning and say that, just in case you wondered what that was about. Um, our mission, we changed that slightly and I think it reflects what I'm trying to say to you. Our mission is now to deliver a quality patient experience in an academic healthcare environment that is responsive to the needs of the population of Northwestern Ontario. And that last part is vitally important for us. All of this is driven by our philosophy which is patient and family centred care. That has not changed. Our plan is, is designed to reflect the values that we've, we've uh, reaffirmed, that's patients first, accountability, respect, and excellence. We have set some key directions that we think are important and will, will tell us in five years whether we've been successful. And those are around the patient experience, seniors health, comprehensive clinical care, Aboriginal health, and, ment and acute mental health. So as we move forward, uh, we know that the donors, like you, are going to be instrumental in helping us to achieve all of this. Uh, I've had the honor as interim president of meeting many of you before, and I'd like to meet you again if you want to talk about what we're doing. I'd be very happy to talk to you. Uh, so I'd like to extend my thanks to you for helping us to achieve our successes in our previous strategic plan and invite you to continue with your involvement as we try to grow our health, sense, health science center together. Gwen? Thank you, uh, Dr. McCready, for that uh, encapsulated snapshot. It sounds like it's, it's another ambitious plan for the Health Sciences Center. It continues to grow, and the role of the foundation is to help make that mission and vision a reality, as well as that plan. The Health Sciences Foundation has also had a very successful year. Uh, it's only been a few months, but it uh, seems maybe a bit longer than we wrapped up our exceptional cancer care campaign where this uh, Health Sciences Center went out to the community with a big vision to bring exceptional cancer care and the community came through. Now we've, uh, of course, had some great announcements in June, which I know uh, Dr. McDougall will be talking more about that. So um, it's an exciting time to be here at the Health Sciences Center. Today we have to... Uh, the pleasure of showing you some of the other things that we've been busy with this year. Yes, you heard a lot about the cancer care campaign, but there's a lot of other things going on and a lot of, a lot of other areas that we are helping with. So um, I think we're going to call up our colleague, uh, 
doctors. Do you want to introduce Dr. Kennedy? No, not really, but I will. <laughs> in case anyone hasn't noticed, this hospital has changed in the last number of years. We've gone from being administratively uh, guided by who I will call bureaucrats to a bunch of clinicians taking over. We've got Rhonda, we've got Stu, uh, amongst others. Um, Dr. Henderson, I don't know, he's in the room. Yeah. So, and Andy Turner, our chief of staff. So we've, got, we've now got a bunch of clinicians who are trying our best to make sure this place goes in the right direction. So I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Stuart Kennedy, who's our executive vice president, uh, medical and academic affairs. Stu. Thank you. I'm gonna try to follow my notes. And this is really says this, it says, it's a, always a great day when I'm invited to speak. <laughs> With the donors. Everybody said, look, Kennedy speaking? Oh, God. Anyway, I'll try to make it quite quick for you. But I really do, the, the, you know, when the healthcare cuts are, are coming and coming at us every single day, uh, when the emergency department, uh, when physicians, when nurses, when housekeeping is struggling every day to really make this place a wonderful place to, to work and a wonderful experience for our patients, we need the donors to actually enhance our experience in other areas. We need to expand it in when I'm talking about a simulation. We need to en enhance it in good, high technological equipment. We really need the donors and we appreciate it. We, we not only appreciate it, we need it as a community because it is a support of the community and the region. So I really, really want to thank each and every one of you for what you give uh, to this hospital because it makes success every single day. So thank you. So I have been asked to introduce a video that gives you a glimpse of a special piece of equipment that we use for interprofessional education, and I'm sure many of you have actually seen it outside the auditorium already. I'm talking about Simon. Simon's our simulation mannequin, and thanks to you, we recently were able to purchase Simon. Now as a teaching hospital, we have we provide clinical placement to over 1,500 healthcare students each year, and we deliver best practice skill development opportunities to over 3,000 existing staff. The quality of education we provide not only supports the training of our next generation of healthcare providers, but also influences the quality of care received by the patients we serve every day. In the past, we used a teaching model of Dr. McCready did it, Dr. Henderson did it, see one, do one, teach one. But that has been replaced with the practice makes perfect with real life experiences, our practice in simulated environments using standardized patients, high fidelity mannequins like Simon, and technology. This model of learning provides consistent opportunities for the development of teamwork, leadership, safety, communication, and psychomotor <laughs> skills. Thanks to you, we now have a dedicated space for simulation that allows students and staff to learn and practice and master procedures and skills in a safe virtual environment before patient contact. So they're actually seeing a mannequin before they see you. Thank God. <laughs> Let's watch together and see what Simon can do. Thank you once again.
So those of you who haven't had a chance to introduce yourself to Simon out there, uh, there'll be a chance to do that after we finish today. And uh, Kelly Missouri Collins is here. Kelly, where are you there? She's in the corner with everybody. This lady can introduce you to Simon if you need to shake his hands or take his pulse, and you can do that. Um, please have a look at him afterwards. So um, now that we've had a little look at how your donations have helped education, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Andrea McDougall to join us. Andrea is our Chief of Cardiology and the Medical Director of our Cardiovascular Program. Andrea. Thanks, Dr. McCready. Um, so, echoing what Glenn said a little earlier on, anyone who knows me well knows that it, it takes a very special event to have me awake at this hour. So, um, and the foundation has been in inviting me to speak at a lot of these events recently, and that can only really mean one thing, that it's a very exciting time uh, for the cardiovascular program here in Thunder Bay. Um, so I think that Many of you probably heard over the summer the announcement made by um, our Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, Eric Hoskins, <coughs> with respect to our cardiovascular surgery proposal. So he came and announced that um, our proposal is going to be supported. Um, so this is a, is a very important step for us in bringing comprehensive cardiovascular care closer to home uh, for patients at the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Centre and for patients in our surrounding region as well. Um, so, so this was a very exciting announcement. Um, also within our cardiovascular program, uh, we currently have the capability with our two cardiac cath labs to offer 24 uh, hour a day, seven day a week, access to coronary angiography and angioplasty for patients who might need it. So no matter what time of day or night you come in with a heart attack, the cath lab will be open and available um, to support you. So thanks to the generosity of um, our donors and people in this room, and I want to say a very special thanks uh, to Roy Lamour uh, from the Royal Canadian Legion, who actually donated another $5,000 just yesterday uh, to our Northern Cardiac Fund. So th thank you very much for <laughs> So thanks to your generosity, uh, we've recently, in the past year, made some upgrades uh, to both hardware and software in our cardiac cath lab. And one of the, the, our new acquisitions is a new C-arm. We've been able to replace uh, completely one of the C-arms in, in our cath lab. So this is a special piece of equipment that allows us to take pictures of the arteries and uh, helps to guide our treatment when, we, um, when we're performing an angioplasty. Um, so, the, the foundation was actually able to um, uh, rope one of my colleagues, Dr. Ian Billingsley, into uh, telling us a little bit more about the C-arm, and we have a video featuring Dr. Billingsley to tell you more about it, so let's take a look. <laughs>
certainly an impressive piece of technology and a critically important one. I know I've seen firsthand what it means to have angioplasty here in Thunder Bay rather than having a family member travel outside of the community. And now we're poised and prepped to bring cardiovascular surgery over the next four years as the planning begins, which will be another huge milestone for our hospital and for our community. Certainly many of our patients who make their way to the cath lab come through the emergency department. And as a father of a youngster, uh, it's a department I'm getting more and more familiar with, it seems too frequently, with uh, various bumps and scrapes along the way. But I'm now very pleased to uh, invite Dr. David Wood, Chief of the Emergency and Trauma, to tell you more about what's happening in our emergency department. Dr. Wood. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, I think everyone here has an idea at times or hears from people that we're a busy place in the emergency department. To put it in a context, across the nation we rank usually second or third as far as the busiest emergency departments in Canada. So we see over 105,000 patients a year and in fact it is quite busy. One of the only reasons that we can sort of deliver the care that we do is uh, because we have a staff which works hard and because we've got some uh, support from people such as yourselves to improve the equipment that we're using every day to uh, make the diagnoses and treatment decisions that we do. So one of the most important or one of the most useful tools we've got right now that uh, we uh, achieved with your support was portable ultrasound. And now the ultrasound has become a standard across Canada for patient care. As far as technology goes, I'm kind of reminded there was a, a quote from a little while back where someone said, you must make sure that this equipment does not fall or fall into the hands or is uh, not used by unqualified practitioners. Now that person was talking about the stethoscope and that was in the 1890s. <laughs> so times change and there was a time when we could not use an ultrasound machine, but now we use it every day and it really does help us. It's, you know, you think of a picture being worth a thousand words, and that's what this is. So I'm going to ask Dr. Patrick Martell, uh, he's on a video here, and he's gonna demonstrate this machine. Thank you very much. I think that's a great example of how your donations have, have helped the work of our, of our physicians. This is a, a sea change in emergency medicine in the last few years, is the ability to do on-the-spot ultrasounds instead of having to wheel people down the corridor and then talk to the radiologist. It really has changed the practice of emergency medicine. So uh, once again, thank you very much. And uh, now um, for our final piece, I would like to invite Dr. Zaki Ahmed, who's our Chief of Internal Medicine and the Medical Director of the Chronic Disease Prevention and Management Program and Medicine Service to join us today. Thank you, Bill. I guess my title is a lot longer than I'm going to be. 
In my role um, as a clinician, I work in the ICU. I do uh, care on the floors in the hospital, uh, working as a hospitalist, working as an internal medicine specialist. And uh, so I see a lot of patients. I see a lot of technology that we use every day, including the ultrasound, the cath lab, uh, where uh, some of this care could not have been possible. Some of this equipment could not have been possible had it not been for your contribution. So thank, let me thank you first. Uh, while the agenda uh, today is being intentionally brief, uh, I want to make sure that our thanks is not. I know that Health Sciences Foundation would like to update you with the equipment that they use. And uh, for that, uh, please feel free to sign up for their email list so that you're updated. The best way we can say thank you is to continue to show you exactly how your gifts have contributed. So with that being said, uh, let's see together how you funded the ventilators in the ICU and the video will talk a little bit about what ventilators do. I use these every day um, in my work life and I know how uh, they've saved lives and uh, we would not have been here uh, doing what we do without this. So thank you very much. is just giving you a glimpse to whet your appetite into what the Health Sciences Foundation and what your donations are doing every day here at Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center. And in addition to this, as I mentioned earlier, we had an incredibly successful cancer care campaign over the past year, so it's been a wonderful year thanks to you. Um, before we move on, I want to thank again Dr. Kennedy, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Wood, and Dr. Med for sharing and coming here this morning. I know you're all very busy and there's heavy patient loads, but thank you for sharing with our donors uh, what, their, what the contribution means. So thank you very much. <laughs> now we're going to shift gears just slightly. You've had the opportunity to see what your gifts have achieved and to where we're headed in the future. I'd now like to invite our board chair, Tracy Nickhart, to say how, a few words and how we're going to share this great news with our community. Tracy? Thanks, Glenn, and I just want to echo uh, Glenn's thanks to our panel of speakers. Thank you for coming today and helping to demonstrate the impact of the gifts made by our donors. Um, and for me, it's, it's really interesting to see um, those reels as well and those videos because we look at the grant applications for the funding for various pieces of equipment, so it's uh, great to see them in use. And thank you to all our donors for coming today and allowing us to demonstrate to you the impact that your gifts have made to the Health Sciences Center. We know from speaking with many of you that it's very important for you to know where your money is used and how it's used. Several years ago, one of our board meetings, 
it was a real sort of eye-opener moment. One of our board members spoke at our meeting and said, people don't get it. They don't understand the role of our foundation here at the Health Sciences Center and exactly what we fund. And even some staff members at the Health Sciences Center don't understand our role. So that was a real turning point for us as a board and really signaled to us um, the impact of knowing where your money goes and exactly how those donations are used. Because for those of us who are quite passionate about making sure that we have world-class health care here at the Health Sciences Center, we get it. And we know those of you in this room, you get it. You've all chosen to give very generously because you see the difference that your gifts make in the lives of your family members and your friends and to our community. But we realize that as a foundation, one of the things we need to do, we need to do a better job of sharing that information with the community as a whole. Letting everyone around us know where do your donations go, when a gift is made to the Health Sciences Foundation, what does it fund? Why should people care about making a gift to the Health Sciences Foundation? And why should they choose to give money to us as opposed to many other um, charities? And so the missing piece was born. The missing piece is a new awareness campaign for the Health Sciences Foundation, and it shows the community exactly what is funded by donations and why their lives may depend on the gifts to the foundation. The imagery I think you'll find is powerful, it's hard hitting, the messaging is bold, and it's intended to start a dialogue within our community and to help our community understand that donors are the missing piece. Because without donations to the Health Sciences Foundation, vital medical equipment will be missing. We would not have the best health care and the best medical technology that's available today without those donations. So let's take a look at the missing piece. Vital medical equipment is the difference between life and death. Without it, what's really missing? A fighting chance. around the hospital, around our community. Today marks the start of an eight-week campaign where we bring this thanks with our media partners to the wider community. <laughs> so when you hear the ads or see them, we ask you to talk about them. Share them with your friends and colleagues. Start a conversation. Share why you're proud to be a donor to the Health Sciences Foundation. Your philanthropy is inspirational. When we give together, we can accomplish so much for our health care and for our health sciences center. As you heard this morning, there's lots on the plate. There's an ambitious five-year plan. There's a cardiovascular proposal that has been approved by the minister. And we're going to make this all a reality, thanks to the community support. I want to thank uh, some of the people that are involved with making this campaign. I see Barry Smith uh, from Generator, uh, who did the creative work, which is, I think, just <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, I think uh, one of your colleagues, Greg, is uh, also here. Uh, DeCapo for doing this. And we really we need to thank our media sponsors. Uh, Acadia Broadcasting, The Chronicle Journal, Net News Ledger, Dougal Media, Baby Magazine, The Walleye, Outfront Media, and Shaw TV. Many of them who are donating the space for us to run these ads to help get our message out. Thank you very much. Watching over their baby son was Blade Miller with Sarah and baby Grayson. Uh, uh, is Grayson in the room? He was here. Uh, he just went outside. Oh, he's forgot. <laughs> they have their own schedule. <laughs> but I'm actually, uh, baby Grayson was actually a patient in the ICU when that was uh, that uh, photo was done. 
and I'm very uh, proud to say that he's here today and doing so well. And uh, I don't know if he'll sign autographs, or <laughs> maybe just a footprint, but uh, just these are real life stories that we're sharing with you today. So, Dr. McCrane, I think we're going to wrap up the formal amount and uh, remarks right now. It's an ambitious time for the Health Sciences Center. Thanks so much, Glenn, and once again, thank you, everybody, for being here. I just want to acknowledge that uh, this is a team effort in our hospital. It includes many people other than clinicians who we couldn't function without. We have a, a big team, uh, as you've heard, over 3,000 people who work in this hospital, all of whom are trying to help you and your family to stay healthy and get healthy if you're not, and uh, we can't do it without your, your donations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That ends the formal remarks. Have another cup of coffee. Have a piece of fruit. I was going to say a cinnamon bun, but on that healthy note, <laughs> grab a piece of fruit on your way out and have a great day. <laughs>